As a person who's interested in ancient cultures, and ancient Chinese culture in particular, a motivation for me in doing this show was helping to illustrate to American audiences incredible richness of ancient history in China. Anyang was really the birthplace of Chinese archaeology. It's where um, the archaeological practice, modern archaeological practice, really began. So it was, in a way, a, an archaeological laboratory that prepared the way, trained the archaeologists that ultimately trained the archaeologists that trained the archaeologists that worked in the Xi'an project. This gallery is all about royal objects from the early Anyang period, from the first few decades, probably 1250 to about 1200 BCE. So we think that this is probably a, a particular kind of ceramic that was only made for use by the royals. I thought that shedding light, this site, um, and the way that it brought Chinese institutions and American institutions, the Freer, the Smithsonian, together uh, for scholarly collaboration was kind of a, an important message for today, showing that over the years there have been these great opportunities and, and warm relations between colleagues working on uh, important projects together. One thing about Chinese material culture is that it's all primarily functional objects. They're made for use. So containers for wine, containers for food, also objects for cooking or warming those objects because it's through tombs that we know so much about ancient cultures. But not only to fixate on death, but also to, yeah, imagine what living in uh, Anyang might have been like for the Shang people. The roads, the canals, the habitation areas, the neighborhoods, the factories. Uh, all of this um, helps us imagine not only what, what death was like and to, to die in, in Anyang, but also maybe more importantly to help us imagine what living in, in Anyang would have been like for the Shang people. These would have been part of a cleansing ritual. So imagine the basin full of water. What you would see looking into the basin, but beneath the water is this serpent that's wound around the inside of the basin looking up at you. The motif is very similar to what we're seeing on the picture, the spouted object, where the lid takes on the form of a, a mask, kind of a semi-human dragon face with these bottle horns. There's the local American audience, and in many ways I, I might be introducing a new Chinese topic um, to an American audience and hopefully contributing to the relationship between Chinese and American people. But I'm also thinking about Chinese audiences and, you know, interpreting, presenting Chinese subjects, Chinese objects to American audiences, making sure that I'm sensitive to the Chinese cultural point of view, and in that way contributing to Chinese appreciation for American interest in China.